I see a lot of people wanting to replace their nine to five with property. And I want to explain in this video how you can go about doing that. So number one thing you've got to think about when it comes to wanting to replace your income is not wanting to quit your job. People make this mistake so many times. I don't know why everyone's in a rush to, I want to quit my job, I want to get into property. It's actually a dumb idea. I'm just being real with you. Like I'm, just, I'm telling you, I've been there. I guess in my case, my contract got terminated, right? So a bit different. I was forced into it and made it happen, right? And again, I'd, I'd literally bought my first property and, and lost my job. So it was like, I was going to go all in and just make it happen because that's my mentality. That's who I am as an individual. I want to do whatever it takes to make it happen. But for someone that's got a nine to five job, that's making them a good income a month, maybe not even the best of income, but a decent income, stay there for now. Focus your time and energy on the hours outside of work to start creating something that allows you to replace your income from work. Don't give up the nine to five and think I'm going to all, all in on property and figure out. Trust me, it's, it's, it's hard and it's not easy. It's not for the faint hearted either. So my best advice is the money that you're earning from your work, utilize some of that to acquire skills. That is the most like most leveraged thing you can do in your corporate environment. Rather than trying to save this money, you might be saving 500 pound a month, right? You might think, oh, I can save 500 pound a month. So let me save my 500 pound a month and keep building up the capital to be able to get started in property. No, that that is going to take you years to be able to buy one property. It's not a scalable method. So what you want to do with that money is acquiring knowledge. Knowledge makes you valuable in the marketplace. Same way if you invested even that money into yourself to acquire skills which are related to your workplace, which allows you to be able to get promotion and earn more in work, that then can start allowing you to even save more money on a monthly basis. So that's where you've got to start. You've got to use that money to either acquire skills. If you're trying to acquire skills in your work environment, do that. If you're trying to acquire skills to learn how to, to buy a property, then do that as well. Because in this case, I was talking about buying property, right? So utilize that money to acquire skills to get you knowledgeable in property investment and to do it correctly. And in the most leveraged way possible, whereby you're not creating another job for yourself, you're creating a business, a truly a business. I see a lot of people that are like coming into property and again, have a landlord mindset of like wanting to manage things themselves and involved in every single nitty gritty decision making. Are you a business owner or are you just another worker? Like, what are you trying to achieve? Just, if you want to be a worker, just stay in your current job. But it's much easier, less headache. You have eight hours a day, you walk away from the job and that's it. So the second thing you need to understand is what best fits your outcome. So what I mean by this is like, are you in property to gain high cash flow? Is it generational wealth, ownership? Like, What are the key things you're looking to get out of property? A lot of people come into property and all you need to understand is what do I want to get out of property? So for example, if your outcome is to get high cash flow and ownership, a great solid strategy is something called buy, refurbish, refinance, houses or multiple occupants. That is simply a project whereby you buy a house, you refurbish it, you rent it out and you look to rent out to individuals so let's say in this case, you've got a house of six rooms. You've got six rooms that you can rent out to tenants. The reason I love this strategy is because one, it generates me high cash flow. When I go into property, I didn't want to be in a strategy whereby I'm only making two, 300 pounds a month from property. I wanted to find something that minimum provides me at least a thousand pounds a month from property. And I realized, well, this strategy allows me to have that income. Two, I know that this strategy is something that if I compare it to like a buy to let, for example, I know I can de-risk my income. Because of a buy to let, if a tenant stops paying me rent for every reason, I go to zero income on that property and I'm in a world of pain, having to cover the mortgages, I can't get rid of the tenant. Versus if I've got a house of multiple occupants, for example, I might have six rooms and if one tenant stops paying me rent, I've still got tenants that can still cover the mortgage and cover the bills and allow me to fix that problem. So again, if I was trying to compare that to a buy to let, right, that would mean that I had to buy 20 properties to try and replace my income. And for me, that just sounded like a very long winded road to go on. And it wasn't something that I wanted to do. So again, I understood HMOs was something that's going to help me achieve the outcome I wanted. So that's the route that I went down. So understand your outcome. And if you want to make a lot of money from property, i.e. income from property, then BRR HMO is something that is definitely going to serve you well. I know some people might talk about service accommodation. And for me, service accommodation wasn't a strategy for me because I quickly realized that I am in essence creating another job. Because in reality, unless of course I've got tens of properties where it allows me to systemize it and create a process to allow a team to come in and help manage this portfolio for me. That's when I truly got business. Until then, if I've got one, two, three, four units, for example, I in essence have a job. Like respectfully, if I've got guests start coming into the property and my cleaners let me down, because again, I'm not big enough portfolio size, right? I probably only have one cleaner. So that cleaner falls ill for every reason and my guests are checking in, the sheets haven't been changed, the house has been cleaned. Guess who does that? You do. 
So you don't have a business, you have a job until you scale to a point whereby you can hire people, hire a company, who have a rotation of cleaners, so you know for sure, even if something happens, there's someone out there to go there and do the job for you. And that's when you can try to truly say you've got a business. And again, I didn't like the service accommodation business because I realized that again, that's a seasonal business. I didn't like the fact that one month I'm doing great, one month I'm doing bad. It's like, I wanna see consistent cash flow. I wanna create predictable income month for month. And again, HMOs served me well on that. So. That was me getting clear on the strategy I wanted to get into and understanding what best serves the outcome I'm trying to achieve. And for me, it's very simple. High cash flow and ownership. Those are the two things I was looking for. Everything else, deal sourcing, rent to rent, lease options, these are all strategies that people try and implement, right? Just didn't literally buy to lets, all of this stuff just didn't fit, fit the profile. I went and understood how can I go out there and buy these properties, renovate them, rent them out to multiple tenants and scale that. And that's literally why I went and did. So just to summarize the second point, if high income is what you're trying to achieve, then example, HMO is a great solid strategy to allow you to be able to achieve that. So point number three, assuming that you have successfully done point one and two, you are at a point now you're starting to build your income, right? So let's say you've done your first HMO project, you're achieving a thousand five a month from that property. You might not have moved into a second property. Let's say you've done two of these projects now, you now have three grand a month from property. Now we have a luxury of our choosing, okay? I've got free grand from my portfolio. I've also earned free grand from work. You can choose to have both these income streams, right? And have six grand a month. Or you might decide, you know what? I'm gonna double down on property and go all in and maybe increase my income further down the road property. Because now you've bought your time back. You now have income, you can survive on planet Earth. So you can actually have the choice to say, okay, I don't, I don't need to have this job. I can still maintain my bills and still carry on, right? And be able to scale the portfolio further. You might decide, actually, you know what? The free grand, I can live on free grand for the rest of my life. I don't need to do anything more. I'm going to just kick it back and just chill. And, and you, I mean, you've got to a position where you pull back your time. And it's a whole concept that I talk about a lot these days is do whatever you can to buy back your time as fast as possible. Like, I don't, I'd never wish for anybody to be in a position where I was, whereby I was forced to make it work and just literally had no choice if you are in a position where you're you're earning good money use that money to acquire skills like i was saying point one and get yourself in a position where you don't have to rely on a job you don't have to work every single day if something happened to you drastically which which meant that you couldn't work again like what's your income source you maybe you're making great you're making 10k a month great but now you can't make 10k a month what do you do you've got no assets that provide your income which doesn't require your time and this is why i'm big on like getting to assets that you can literally when you do the hard work once, you have income coming out month on month. I can't tell people how important it is to have that safety net of just knowing that whatever you do, this money will come in. Whatever happens to you, this money will come in month on month. Like you've got to get into that position. So look, the message here is get to a point where you've scaled, you've, you've at least you're balancing your income. At that point, you've got a choice. You can carry on scaling it, at that rate or you can say you know what i'm going to quit my job so i've got all my time and i'm focusing on the portfolio and go crazy with it and have this portfolio that provides you income month for month and now you really have truly built the thing that you wanted to do which is to buy back your time have choices have the financial freedom have something that you can pass on to your family when your time is up as well so you've done the hard work so i hope that makes sense for people that are in the nine to five like i said i encourage you not to quit your job on day one if you want to go all in on property like i said it's a dumb idea you definitely want to look at scaling this side by side with your job. You are creating a business. This is truly a business. If you're doing it in the right way, if you've done what I've done, which is BRHMO, I have people that have come to me and wanted to learn the strategy and, and all of them have a job and they've all built income alongside their job. Some even love their job. They have no ambition to even quit their job. They're like, Alfred, I love what I do. I just wanna have that security blanket. That I know that if something, God forbid, happens to me, I don't then just all of a sudden have no income coming in because all I had was done my job and now I can't do my job anymore. So if you're interested and you're listening to this video and you're like, this is something I want to set up for myself and want to learn more. I have left a link in the description for you to, be able to reach out to myself or my team and stand a bit more by your situation and see how we can be of help to yourself. So guys, I hope this makes sense. You have more clarity. I shall see you in the next video. Take care.